Hey there guys, there's been quite a lot of developments in HID technology and we're going to look at some of those developments and we're going to compare different HIDs, so metal halide, HPS, um, ceramic metal halide, most recently ceramic HPS and compare them all together and also compare them against LED. The um, first thing we're going to do is compare spectrum. Then we're going to look at the uh, efficiency and output of each of the systems and then look at the total cost of running them over three years to see which ones are better value. Um, so yeah, let's look at Spectrum first. Uh, typically in the past growers growing with HID used these bulbs, metal halide bulbs, uh, in veg. Not the most efficient bulbs. HPS output much more power or photons than, um, than these guys per watt. But what was special about metal halide was that it had a lot of blue in it. And blue regulates plant uh, development. It keeps plants short and dense by reducing the internodal distance. That's the distance between branching. So lots of blue in excess of like six or seven percent blue in a spectrum will bring uh, plant size down and that's what people wanted in veg because they are growing indoors and they don't want their plants stretching and sprawling all over the place. However, when they flipped to flower, they typically would use a HPS bulb, this guy here. And you can actually see the sort of relative uh, yellowy uh, output of the HPS bulb. And that's because it has very little blue in it. Uh, it's mostly uh, green, orange and red, or green, yellow and red. So you get this orange kind of spectrum overall. But they're, they're highly efficient. Still are highly efficient, very efficient fixture, uh, even compared to uh, some LEDs these days. So um, yeah, people switched from metal halide to HPS to get the blue in the spectrum from the metal halide even though it was lower efficiency and then get the higher photon output um, for flowering even though the plants would definitely stretch more under this fitting we really needed the horsepower so we needed the HPS. The next came ceramic metal halide and here is one here this is the ceramic HPS bulb, but it's the same tech inside in terms of the bulb. And this little uh, bulb inside allowed higher, allows higher pressure within here and allows different uh, metals basically to be ignited inside and to create a broader spectrum. Um, the uh, ceramic metal halide spectrum, uh, much better for total plant growth used a lot in film and in shops and retail that kind of thing to give a good color representation because it has pretty much all the um, aspects uh, uh, or all the wavelengths of light uh, represented a um, little bit more efficient than your basic HPS um, but quite considerably more expensive but that was a great development and uh, really brought us on and then I was saying earlier we got the ceramic HPS. Uh, this is the Maxi Bright one. This is the Hortilux one. Uh, slightly different approaches to both. Uh, the Hortilux one needs to be run in a specialized uh, digital ballast, uh, which I haven't got here. Um, the Maxi Bright one doesn't. This this is being run off a standard HPS type uh, ballast. So it's a Lumi, um, a runoff of Lumitech ballast in this instance. Uh, and that's actually it under there, in that, uh, under that reflector. And the benefit of this is you're able to get pretty much the best of both worlds. So you're getting the um, full spectrum, which can go from veg all the way up to flower. So it's got enough blue for veg, but it's got high enough efficiency for flower and right through the spectrum. So the ceramic metal halide and the ceramic HPS are very, very good developments 
on the um, metal halide HPS combination. I would recommend, if nothing else, if you're doing that at the moment, if you're doing a metal halide and HPS, please consider switching over to ceramic metal halide or the ceramic HPS. Uh, Maxi Bright fittings are, are 110 euros or thereabouts for a 100 watt fitting, sorry, 600 watt fitting, which is considerably more expensive than a HPS bulb but you will get much better growth through both your phases um, of uh, veg and flower. Um, so you'll get more growth because it's higher efficiency in your veg stage. So you'll have plants either vegging quicker or bigger for the same time. And then when you get to the flowering stage, you don't need to switch. So you just need the one bulb and you will get uh, you won't get as much stretching when you switch switch to flower because this has got more blue in it so it's a win-win situation uh, a little bit more expensive but in my view well worth the money um, and you're saving yourself and having two lamps and all that stuff so yeah uh, highly recommend these um these 600 watt um ceramic hbs bulbs excellent just looking at the spectrum to demonstrate this Got a little chart here I made out. It's got the sun on the left hand side for reference. The sun is a high level of blue, 25%. You can see the metal halide there at 23%, which is why, it, as I said, it was chosen. HVS, very low, only 3% blue. Not enough to uh, uh, generate short um, plant growth or you know, uh, short internodal distance and dense plant growth. Uh, ceramic um, CMH LEC, so that's a Philips one, 942, that's 4.2K color temperature, that's got 11%. The ceramic HPS from Maxi Bright has got 11% too, so showing you that it's, it's right there, um, balancing efficiency, it's got a lot more red in it than the even the uh, 4.2K um, CMH. So it's a, it's a really, really excellent choice. Just got LED stuck on the end there, just for reference. You can see it's very close to the ceramic HPS. Um, a little bit more blue, so it's a slightly cooler um, white color, but uh, very closely related. So once you're over the spectrum hump, it's then into efficiency. And um, what I've done is I've, I've tested all of these lights in the same setup with the same procedure and the same sensors and I've got a PPFD per watt figure for each of those lights. So we start at the bottom, you can see metal halide, very low relative to the others, 0.93 PPFD per watt. Uh, the ceramic HPS and regular HPS, both in and around the same at 1.16 to 1.19. So um, that's considerable, that's 30% more efficient than the metal halide. And then you get to the ceramic metal halide at 1.29, which is a really nice uh, efficiency, uh, high efficiency for a regular system. Just to be to um, clarify, you can get your more expensive, higher performing HPS. You can get your double ended. The, the higher wattages, by the way, are more efficient in HPS and HID generally. So your 1000 watt HPS will be more efficient. Um, and then you get your double ended one which will be more efficient again and uh, these are all single ended and you get um, the 400 volt versions for example the Kavita do and you can get up to 1.3 nearly 1.4 with those fixtures so you can push HPS right up there but also um, same thing is happening with CMH so you're getting uh, double ended CMH bulbs with a thousand watts um, and 600 watts all those uh, th it, uh, the full range of ceramic metal halide bulbs. I have to admit, I haven't tested them. I intend to get a hold of them to see, but I'm pretty sure that they're going to get a five or ten percent improvement as well, uh, up to about 1.4 micromoles per watt. Interestingly, then when you look at the fixture cost, uh, your um, your HPS. Uh, oh, by the way, just on the HPS prices as well. I know there's a large range you can get cheap ones and expensive ones. Um, I just sort of went mid-range on, on the HID Digital, went to a few shops and sort of ball ballparked them. So the uh, metal halide and HPS, the system together, ballast and bulb, around 230 for a decent one. 
Uh, the smaller CMH still quite expensive at 190 and the ceramic HPS uh, the charge is a little bit of a premium as I said for these bulbs um, the total system is about 350 and that's for the iHortilux also I think it's recommended retail price of 350 for the 600 watt fitting we plug all those numbers into a calculation to see how much it's going to cost over a three year lifespan um, what I've done is I've targeted it for a 750 micromole average output. So for example, with the 600 watt HPS, it outputs 747 micromoles. So you're going to need pretty much one fixture. Um, for the uh, 315 watt CMH, it's 439 micromole output. We're going to need you know nearly two of those fixtures to get 750 micromoles average. And then I calculated the electricity cost for running those systems over three years and added the lot together to get a total cost. And you can see CMH, given its efficiency, uh, is right up there at the top. Um, as I said, the higher uh, efficiency HPS would cost a little bit more, but they'd also uh, run a bit more efficient. Um, but to be fair, all of those are put into the dark from the LED fixture, um, even those significantly higher fixture costs up front, you are saving uh, nearly a third of your total costs over three years. That's at 17 cent per kilowatt hour. If your electricity cost is a little bit higher, these savings will, will occur even earlier than that, uh, and even more um, uh, a larger margin. Um, last thing then is just to look at is, is heat. So depending on the time of year people want or, or don't want heat, um, or additional heat I should say, um, in their grow room. Just showing you a little um, infrared camera, there, uh, camera shots there from my Seek thermal sensor. And you can see that the HID, we're looking here at the ceramic HPS, is um, it, it bulb temperature is running up at about 330, 350 degrees centigrade, which is very, very hot. And you can see the radiated heat down below. Whereas, excuse me, if you look at the Migro Array 4, for example, you can see the surface temperatures are much lower, the bulb temperature much lower, and the radiated heat from the fixture is much lower. And so uh, certainly for most people running indoors, it's an advantage to have lower heap output from the lighting system. It enables two things. It enables you to grow uh, more through the summer uh, with less cost for um, either high speed fans or air conditioning to cool it down. Um, but it also enables you to put more light into the same size space. With HID, most people are limited to, for example, a thousand watt in a five by five or 600 watt in a four by four you can exceed that amount of power output considerably in those same size tents with LED just because they're more efficient and less heat is going into the tent. So there are big advantages there. But as you can see, you're getting very similar spectrum with the LED. I know some people go on about a little bit of UVA and far red in the spectrum on the HID. Um, the little bit of UVA, it's just deeper blue. It's not going to um, change the plant response. You need UVB for that, um, which is uh, which is not present from HID fixtures. Or and on the other end, where your far red is, far red, if you remember, is heat. So that is that unwanted heat that you're seeing being radiated. But also, uh, far red uh, is not as photosynthetic as other photons, um, red in particular. And also, um, it can cause stretching if you have too much of it. So there is no huge benefit to having some added UVA and far red, other than to potentially uh, stretch your plants. So much better to have your the photons you're generating go, come, going into the, um, the main power spectrum because it will be more efficient and uh, not going to have detrimental effects on plant development. So yeah, that's a real quick flyby on, um, on HID update and HID versus LED update with the current efficiencies of all those systems. 
I hope you enjoyed. Um, I'm sure there'll be loads of questions and comments down below. Uh, I'll keep an eye on them and trying to get back to as many as possible. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed. Take care.